The song you are hearing right now is the first track in a six-hour album titled Everywhere at the End of Time. It's truly a marvelous work of art. Through only the use of music, the album portrays the stages of dementia. It slowly progresses from the music you can hear now to a more sinister and unrecognizable mix of sounds. I strongly recommend you at least skim through the album if you ever have the time. I personally found it to be a thoroughly intriguing, yet disturbing listen. As I listened, I felt the nostalgic and dreamlike feeling of the first few songs fade away. It was like my memories were gradually being ripped from my hands. I can't even begin to imagine what it would be like to experience dementia. How could something that's been with you all your life and made you who you are just disappear? And if this could happen to anyone, what's the point in building memories if you can't find them later in life? I once held no value in sentiment, as I've mentioned countless times before. I had no value in dreams, ambitions, or memories. I was ignorant of how memories were an integral part of my personality. Unfortunately, they were also extremely easy for me to lose. I can memorize just about any string of numbers, if it's practical enough. I mean, I still remember the lunch number I had in elementary school. Because I only subconsciously cared about the practicality in memories, I shut out anything sentimental. Furthermore, I am still unable to describe what happened when this photo was taken on a family vacation several years ago. Over time, I've been able to balance my value and memories more, as I've worked towards regaining sentiment. It turns out that there is a point to creating them, regardless of if they last a lifetime or not. Memories not only work to shape you into the person you are, they live on in other people to carry out your ambitions, even if you lose them. Surprisingly, one of the greatest illustrations of this importance of memories is an anime about androids who cling to their own memories and whose job it is to tear others' memories apart. Join me as we look through the eyes and the memories of a dying android, a step ahead of time, a mile behind eternity. What would you do if you had the capability to destroy someone else's memories with your own hands? What if the sole reason you existed was to do so? Knowing the moral and emotional weight of such a purpose, PsyCorp understandably placed that burden onto the shoulders of special androids called Giftias. However, those androids also had feelings, and free will, making it no better than placing the responsibility onto humans. In the world of plastic memories, it was a necessary sacrifice, as the Giftias had limited lifespans before they became dysfunctional and dangerous. Their lifespans served to sober the employees to the brevity of life. They insisted on continuing to create memories with each other, forcing existential dread to linger within their subconscious minds. Memories are temporary. Eventually, they will fade from our minds, Yet we humans insist on creating as many as we can before that happens. The anime addresses the importance of memories by illustrating how human characters confront the possible meaninglessness of creating them. The androids were fully aware of their short lifespans, and that they would lose their memories within only a decade of gaining consciousness. In that way, they were not unlike the beginning stages of dementia. Plastic Memories uses the Giftias to highlight the stage in which helplessness sets in. It's hard to imagine the sheer terror of knowing your memories are disappearing, and knowing there's nothing you can do to stop it. Even if the Giftias were terrified, anxious, or apprehensive, many of them seemed prepared to have their memories destroyed. 
They feared losing their memories far less than having no memories to lose. Why are we humans so insistent on experiencing as many memorable things as possible in our lives? It's because memories matter. First of all, they are the hammer that forges your personality. Sure, there are some aspects of personality that have been traced to genetics, but experiences are most of what makes you, you. When you go through something enjoyable, it can change your perspective on many things, possibly even some things that seem unrelated. Likewise, if you have a traumatic experience, it can shape your future attitude and decisions towards certain things. All memories shape how you think, what you prioritize, and how you act. Plus, you know the saying we've all heard through the entirety of our lives. Live life to the fullest. It may be a statement that has been overly saturated as time has moved forward. However, it's still a great way to live. Now, I'm not saying you should necessarily treat every day as if it's your last. Even during their final days together, Ida and Tsukasa still went into work frequently. They wanted to continue living as they always had. They chose not to avoid the pain of memories and creating them, as doing so wouldn't have made their lives much of lives at all. That was how they lived life to the fullest, always striving to deepen and establish bonds with others through the common experiences they had. Moreover, the memories they shared with their co-workers and each other developed bonds among them. Memories are also a vital part to shaping relationships with others. For me personally, memories my friends and I share make up a large portion of our everyday conversations. We always try to deepen our bonds further and build new bonds with each other by trying new things, spending time with each other, and doing what we love together. When you forge those connections and share memories, some of those memories become one and the same with others. You influence others with those bonds, which makes you live on through your loved ones and the ones that they influence. No matter how limited by time we are, our memories can always outlast us and carry on a step ahead of time. Although they are ahead of time, they are still far from eternity. Memories and influence will still always fade with time. Nothing is truly eternal. That being said, temporality doesn't undermine the value of anything else in our lives, so why should it undermine the value of our memories? In spite of the constant and abrupt changes in tone that break up the seriousness of the anime, Plastic Memories portrays some powerful themes regarding humanity. Through the mortality of androids, it emphasizes existential dread and how ineffective it is against the human desire to create memories. It also depicts how memories shape a human's personality, mental state, behavior, and influence. The tears I always shed at the end of the show are not full of sadness. They're tears of joy. I'm always reassured that my memories mean something by the way Ida affected Tsukasa after her death. I know that there will always be someone influenced by my life journey and all of the experiences I've built up along the way. Through that reassurance, I can live life to the fullest just as the other members of the terminal service do.